Ask me how I'm doing. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Don't worry about me. Well, I'm not kidding about the living alone part. I am living alone. Micah, gone. That sounds a lot worse than it actually is. We have some explaining to do, clearly. This was definitely not on my bingo card for 2024, but here we are, living alone again. I haven't lived alone for 10 months, maybe like a year-ish. So this is definitely gonna take some getting used to. You're probably so confused as to what's going on. Same. To make a really long and complicated story short, Micah moved to another island. So I'm here living on Oahu and Micah moved to Maui. currently in Maui moving Micah here so I'm here the next two days just to like help him move in get settled it's kind of crazy this day has completely crept up on us and it's so wild that like this is his home partially now I feel like I have some explaining to do but we'll get to that later right now Micah's at the fire station so I'm waiting for him while he meets his crew that he's gonna be working with but yeah we went to <laughs> we went to Costco to get some stuff for the firemen and we also got Skinny Pop. It's our favorite snack. Also in a rental car because, why do I sit like this? We have quite the to-do list of errands to run to get them all moved in. So it is definitely a moving month for him, for me, for us. Uh, <laughs> shocked that I didn't cry. We still have lots of time though, but back home we go without Micah. I'm back home. It's so weird seeing like all of his stuff still here because he's like half there, half here, but he's not around. It's so weird. Obviously I'm used to him being gone during the day, but it's different because I know that he's always going to come home at the end of the night. <laughs> not tonight, not tomorrow and not the next day. Also this place is just looking really empty in general. As you can see, I've kind of started taking down all the decorations, the bookshelf is empty. We've kind of begun the moving out process. I went and picked up a few groceries because we're kind of running low on a few things. Randomly got these mushrooms that are like soaked. Some guac sounded really good. Picked up cucumber, kimchi, and seaweed salad. And then like other things, fruits, veggies. Suddenly I forget all the cooking skills that I learned and I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna make for dinner. I also am remembering that Micah pretty much primarily cooked all the meat because cooking chicken especially scares me. So we're gonna be on the cooking journey again. I wouldn't be surprised if I have pasta tonight, I'm not gonna lie. time I cooked for just myself. It's so weird. The thing is I have lived alone before and I lived alone for a year and a half. I just think it's jarring going from knowing what it's like to live with someone for like 
10 months, almost a year to having to live without them. If we had never experienced living together, I feel like it wouldn't feel as shocking as it does right now. Anyway, while I eat my dinner, I thought I'd catch you up to speed because you're probably like, Ava, what's going on? Didn't you just buy a house? Or aren't you guys moving in together? The answer to that is yes, and I still am. I'm just going to be living alone for most of that experience now, which I wasn't really expecting, but it'll be like part-time living alone. So let me explain. Mmm, I killed it. As you probably know, Micah graduated his firefighter recruit class, so he's officially a firefighter and he got stationed in Maui. So that's why he's there. This has actually always been the plan, but the reason it's so shocking is because we really thought he was gonna be able to stay home. Oh. Hi, Angel. Hi. Hey, I wanted to say hi, see how you're doing. <laughs> that was my mom making sure that I was not in shambles on the floor. Back to what I was explaining, during his nine months of training and recruit class, we really thought like with our whole chest fully believed that he was going to be able to just transfer over here and ask to be stationed here instead and so the whole time we thought that and we basically got confirmation that he has to move to maui like they can't just easily transfer him over he has to finish his probation first uh we found that out like two weeks before he graduated which was a month ago, which obviously throws a little wrench in the plans, I guess, just because we live together. So that's just like a whole thing. And we still technically do. So this is where it gets interesting. If you don't know what a firefighter schedule is like, it's definitely not your typical job schedule Monday through Friday. They have three 24 hour shifts and then four days off in a row. So for example, he would work Monday 7 a.m. to Tuesday 7 a.m have Tuesday 7 a.m. to Wednesday 7 a.m. off and then go back Wednesday 7 a.m. to Thursday. So he would like work Monday, off Tuesday, work Wednesday, off Thursday, work Friday, and then four days off in a row. And the cycle just continues. So he'll always have those four days off, which is really nice. And obviously Maui is very close. It's a 30 minute plane ride away. So he'll be coming home on those days off, get settled while we move our stuff from here into the house. And then, I don't know, we'll see how it goes because I feel like that's a lot of traveling to do all the time and it definitely adds up. So once we're kind of like settled into moving, I know he really wants to be obviously a part of that process too and be here for that. Then I'll visit him on his four days off and we'll kind of just figure it out. So as of right now, I think the part that makes us scary is we don't know how long this is going to last. At a minimum, he's going to be there for three and a half months. That's minimum. At a maximum, if there's no vacancies at... Oahu stations here then he won't be able to transfer so it could be upwards of like a year a year and a half we just have no idea right now and I think that's the scary part we don't know how long we're gonna have to do this whole long distance thing and I say long distance in quotes because I know it's not that far to get to but for me it's still long distance because I can't just like even drive to go see him I would have to book a flight and do that and I am really grateful that Maui is so close because I don't know how often we'd be able to travel back and forth if it were farther. So even though it's not ideal that he had to leave, one, I'm grateful, like I said, that it's so close and that he has those four days off. With that schedule in mind, he's gonna be gone for six days at a time and then either come home for the four days off or stay there and I would go visit him. So I'm like half living alone again and then half not. Yeah, so that's the sitch. Hopefully I explained that well and you're not too confused, but yeah. I'm probably gonna bring that back the living alone vlogs again. So that is the uh, one good thing. <laughs> yeah, like I was saying earlier, it's just kind of weird figuring out how to exist by yourself again, which I have lived alone before. That's not the problem. I know I can do it. I'm just used to not. I'm used to seeing him every single day. I'm used to him coming home in the evening. It's not that serious. I'm just sensitive. <laughs> He's not like leaving for a year at a time. I need to calm down, hold on. I think the part that just makes me sad is that we both have some of the biggest monumental like things in our lives going on right now. Him starting his dream career and then me like buying a house. And I hate that we can't really share those experiences like we thought we would be able to. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> going through some changes. I feel like I just am emotional because I'm mourning that chapter of us living here together but i'm also super excited for the next chapter and i'm so happy for him that he's doing what he's wanted to do since he was like four years old i'm so happy for him i just wish i could be there but i will say 
the pro of long distance, not seeing someone as often as you're used to, is when you see them again, that hits different. On another note, I, over the past week or so, have been packing up this place, which is also making me emotional, so like, that's amazing. And of course, I've been vlogging it, so let's cut to me packing up my life. It is time to start packing up this apartment, getting ready for the move. I'm trying to get a head start here because it's only me. Obviously with Micah gone, that's less manpower, which is fine. I moved into this apartment by myself. I'm confident that like I can get this together. I'm embarrassed to say this. It's been a while since I've had to activate uh, the independence part of myself, especially living with him for a year. Obviously I depend on him and rely on him for a lot of different things. I can't exactly just sit down on the couch, look pretty while everything gets like packed up. Lots to get done. I gave myself plenty of time to do it. I wanna start packing up the kitchen. There's so much in here. I feel like this will probably be the hardest room just because everything's fragile. I don't do really well with fragile. I tend to be destructive. I'm actually not too worried at all about the bedroom just because most of it's clothes. I'll pack those away in suitcases and then it's just like furniture stuff, little decorations here and there, nothing too crazy. This part is so upsetting, my empty bookshelf. I cleared it off the other day and it's so weird. It just looks so naked. So I have all my books right here. This is also very upsetting. I have a big box filled with books, but I have to get rid of some more. So these books on the side are the ones that are gonna be, well, not this one. I'm reading this one, but these new ones will be finding a home at the library, which is good. I'm happy to donate books to other people, but my dreams of having a home library just keep going down the drain. I'm just trying not to keep books that I know I'm not gonna read again. Also, when you're moving, you kind of just realize how much you have and how much you probably don't need. So I wanted to confine it to one box. So that's what I did. I've cleared off a lot of this bookshelf already. My dresser is also looking pretty naked. Haven't done anything in the bathroom yet. The closet still needs to be taken care of. That's not a problem for right now. Enough dilly dally, let's get packing. Packing up my ceramic pieces. Uh, it'll be a miracle if I can pack these without any of it breaking. This is another version of bubble wrap, but it's a little more sustainable because it's made out of paper. Entering my Bob the Builder era. Now I am Bob the Unbuilder era because I have to like take apart this place. I need to take some screws out of the walls, which as a renter, obviously you're not gonna, especially if you like live someplace for a long period of time, you're not just gonna not put stuff up on the walls so you know that you have to deal with it when you move out. And I'm like, ah, oh, I'll just do whatever I want. I'll deal with it when I move out. Now I'm moving out, now I have to deal with it. Hopefully it's nothing too crazy because I would really love to get my security deposit back because that was quite a sum of money. <laughs> How am I supposed to get this part out? Does anyone know how to get that part out? The screw is in there and what is that? I forget what that means. <laughs> oh God. Oh, that's not looking good. Oh God. Ooh, that's wall coming out. Cool. <laughs> you can't even notice, right? Ugh. Forget what I said. Don't put stuff in the walls. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> These were iconic. I'm glad I put these up. I always get like weird looks. Anytime someone comes to the apartment for the first time, they're like, what is that? Their hands. It was kind of random and also like almost uncomfortable, but I feel like it added fun personality. Those were from Urban Outfitters. Yeah, I'm just ripping stuff out of the walls right now. Oh, 
Thanks. There's like big holes. Like how big? More than a pencil? Uh, That's not no problem. Period. I treated myself to some California Pizza Kitchen. Something about CPK will always hit. I got a barbecue chicken salad with ranch, duh. That looks so good. Also these containers, I love keeping them because you can use it like as a reusable one. Some buffalo cauliflower. This is my dinner tonight. I am so exhausted from packing. If you have moved before, you know how much of a mental toll it takes and you kind of just forget how much work it is until you do it again. So I'm gonna sit here and actually turn on some Gossip Girl or Vampire Diaries. I don't know which one. Just something that's gonna make me feel cozy, comforted. It's kinda, I don't know, a cool full circle moment in a way because I remember when I first moved into this place and I was living alone, Gossip Girl and Vampire Diaries was always on in the background to kinda keep me company. And I really leaned on both of those comfort shows while I was adjusting to living alone again. So here we are <laughs> doing that again. If you have a comfort show, let me know which one that is for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my last video in this apartment.